Ateta confirms Arsenal's Valhovic interest in there and this is the story that we brought you here on to Rokani Football Podcast. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? I go by the names of Rokan David aka RD on today's channel. Smash the like button, comment and share and if you're totally watching us for the very very first time, endeavor to subscribe to our channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Now today, you know African Cup of Nations, the game has been on. No Arsenal player has been involved today until Ghana playing a team which goes by the names of Morocco in there and as things turned it looks like it looks like it's still 0-0 zero, zero, but Ghana are really giving a game to a team which goes by names of Morocco. Why am I talking about a team which goes by names of Ghana? Because Thomas Partey is into this. He is playing into the down middle pivot of a team which goes by names of Ghana in there. The likes of Pan Steel are in, the likes of Jordan Ayu are in, Suleimana and Jordan Ayu in there. All are into this, into there. Smash the like button, comment and share. Let's get into the main reason of us really doing this video in here onto the Rokan Football Podcast. The main reason is simple. It's all about that Serbian who is 21 years old playing today for Fiorentina in the Italian Serie A. He has scored loads of goals this season in there. That is Dusan Valhovic in there for you. He's the man headlining all the news all over the world, especially he's the hottest asset in the transfer window, guys. I'm notables that are really going to move in there. I know Dennis Zakaria is being wanted by Manchester United. You get and very many other teams in there, but I can really come and I can really talk with authority that the hottest asset in the transfer window is Valhovic. Why? In the entire football, what makes football interesting is goals. Goals make football interesting. If you can't score goals, then the game is boring because a game without goals, it wins nothing. There is nothing interesting other than those goals in there that these people really come out and score. That's why you see the Ballon d'Or is what has been won mostly by forwards in there. Known people like known people like known people like midfielders, defenders in there. A few defenders have won have only heard of Cannavaro winning it. You get so it's really hard if at all you really don't score goals to see to it that you really step onto that podium. So as per now, news has been come out and confirmed by the manager of Arsenal who goes by names of Mikel Ateta that they're really going to come out and sign a center forward in there and this comes after Arsenal going up and losing to a side which goes by the names of Nottingham in there because they really had no shot on target. I'm really going to come back and talk about that but I really want to first give you the Valhavic entire story in there. Now, while in a press conference, this is what he came out and said, this is Mikel Ateta on this is what Mikel Ateta said about new striker plans at Arsenal. We are there whether we can accomplish that in January or the summer is a different question, but we are there. We are open for January. Ateta also ruled out a chance of resigning Jack Wilshire in there for you. So that's what Ateta really came out and said. And that really just told you that they are confirming that they are really wanting a player who goes by names of Dusan Valhovic in there. And they've put up their bid. I did that story. You've all been watching it here on to on to to Rokan Football Podcast. I thank everyone that is really watching into this channel and subscribing to our channel because you are really letting us grow into the level that most of us deserve to be in. Now, after the manager saying that, what else do you come out and turn down? Because the number one target of Arsenal is Dissan Valhovic in there. He has scored 16 goals in the Italian Serie A, you get, and he's starting another journey today in the Italian Serie A. And guess what? The only way this team, which goes by names of, which goes by names of Fiorentina, can really get some good amount of money out of Dusan Valhovic is now. If at all they really wait and he really reaches the summer, he will be left with just one year on his on his contract. And he's still young. He can even decide to play that one year and then go for free in the summer of 2023. So that is what has really put this deal online in there. Arsenal coming in, putting their, putting their 46 million pounds and Lucas Torreira making it 58 million pounds in there. And if at all Arsenal does that, they would have even punched beyond their weight because they are the best summer transfer spenders with 100 
and 48 close to 150 million pounds that's what arsenal used to buy in players in the summer they brought in lokonga they brought in nuno tavares they bought in ben white they brought in tomiyasu and they brought in a player who goes by the names by the names of aaron ramsdale <laughs> there for you aaron ramsdale 30 million pounds ben white 50 million pounds tomiyasu was was he at 16? Yes, 16 million pounds. Then they brought in another player who goes by the names of Aaron, no, not Aaron Ramsdale, Nuno Tavares at 7 and Lokonga at 16 million pounds in there for you. So it shows you how much a player, the team which goes by the names of Arsenal, went ahead to, to really go ahead and really spend. And if at all they really add on these 56 million pounds in there, that means in a space of just seven months, Arsenal would have spent. 200 million pounds in there and Arsenal guys really come out and say that you guys are not spending money when did Arsenal last spend like this when did Arsenal last spend like this that's the big question I really want to pose to you guys because I really feel like Arsenal is punching beyond its weight it's punching beyond its weight but they are doing this in the favor or in the heart of making their fans really feel like they are they are being cared about by the team which goes by names of Arsenal in there for you so that's Arsenal in there for you and Dusan Valhovic is being targeted by Arsenal and the manager who goes by the names of Mikel Ateta really came out and confirmed that they are really chasing in for a striker in there but even Fabrizio confirmed the submission of Arsenal in there for you that Arsenal have really submitted in their have submitted in their bid in there but it looks like Fiorentina is still looking and weighing whether there are some other options because rumor has it that teams like Tottenham Hotspur are also interested in there for you and I think this deal might go on the wire yeah I feel this transfer might go on the wire and that wire might be around 28th 29th of of January in there so I really feel like this will go on the wire. That's what I really feel. I really feel like this deal is going to go on a wire. Reason, Arsenal looks like they are more interested in there, but Fiorentina is still, is still, is still holding it up because they know that there might be a big team that is really going to come in for Varovic because Man City are really looking for a setup forward but according to how they are really scoring goals i don't know whether their interest is still in valhovic because even the manager of man city came out and turned down valhovic interest by city by the citizens in there for you so tottenham hotspur is interested you never know bayern can come in and very many other teams in there. even the Serie are there other teams like juventus that are really lacking goal scorers in there they can really go in and say valhovic can you please come to our team in there because juventus is really looking bad they are not scoring goals yesterday they won by four goals to three in there but if i to ask yourself how many did the morata score because the morata is their center forward i saw dibala onto the scoring sheet in there for you but that really that really has brought this deal to stall in there because fiorentina feels like there might be a bigger offer in there but i really think that at the end of it all because we are into the COVID market arsenal really going to come out and win this they are winning this as no reason no one is really going to come out and spend such amount of money because you can't expect spurs to come in and spend that amount of money in that area because they have they have hurricane in there for you and even if hurricane is not playing there they can put some Hyun Min or lucas torreira and they play as as they play as the false nines in there i really feel like Tottenham hotspur is lacking depth in the midfield and the wide attacking the, the wide attacking areas of the pitch so i feel like them coming out and confirming that Bagwine is really going to be sold out of the club that means they're really preparing to bring in more wide forwards not center forward because valhovic is a typical number nine though he's really tall energetic and he really feels like and he really plays very well in there he can involve you in play he has a sweet left foot he has a hard short he's a giant in there but i will feel like it's not your time it's not your time for a team like spurs to go in and spend most of its money on valhovic in there and to a coach like conte i don't feel feel like he'll go in for valhovic in there for you i think i think arsenal are into this race alone that's why they are even easing themselves after making that bid of valhovic i think that's why they are very much okay with what is really going to come out there because if at all there are people there are very many other people competing for the signature of valhovic trust me arsenal wouldn't have been acting normal as it is acting right now they would have they would have been acting different because if Arsenal says we want a player and there are very many other people interested in him, they rapidly go in and swap him out and complete the deal immediately. Remember, let me give you an example. Tomiyasu, 
Tomiyasu was wanted by Tottenham Hotspur before they brought in a player who goes by the names of Emerson Royal. You get? But guess what Arsenal did? On the D-Day, because Spurs, Spurs first target to replace Spurs first target to play to the right back position this season was Tomiyasu Tokohiro and they had the second option as Emerson Royal from Barcelona and guess what happened Arsenal was really looking at other players like Saginio Dest in there Max Arons, Lamparte in there and guess what happened what happened was simple Arsenal reached an extent when they couldn't really get the signature of those players and when they were when they really saw that Tomiyasu is on the blink of joining a team which goes by name Zotam Hotspur. They really went into there with Edu the, as the sporting director of football director of Arsenal and they really sealed a deal with, is it Bologna? And then the player was announced as an Arsenal player, that is Tokohiro Tomiyasu in there for you joining a team which goes by name of Arsenal. So I really feel like Arsenal are really easing themselves because they're taking their time because they, you know, they're the only ones into this deal. No one serious is into this deal and trust me, Arsenal talks directly to the agent of a team which goes to the agent of Valhovic in there. And Arsenal talking to the agent, the agent will assure them that ABCD is going to happen. Though the agent really came out and said that he cannot really see his player going out to Arsenal. But trust me, I feel like another move for Dissan Valhovic should be Arsenal. Not any other team because he will go there and evolve further because when you look at the players at Arsenal, almost they are in his age. And it's very easy to convince a player like Dissan Valhovic that you are the only missing missing piece in this jigsaw of Arsenal in there. You get? He's the only missing piece in the puzzle. You get? Because when Arsenal gets in Valhovic, this January transfer window, it would be like two, three players away from competing for top four on a regular basis. Because in that midfield, if at all Arsenal gets in a Zakaria or, or a Yefis Besuma to really come up and really put competition on Grant Xhaka, because for me, I really don't rate Grant Xhaka because I don't believe in him by the because he's too careless. He's a good player, but he really costs you a game. He costed them the other game of Man City where Arsenal considered five nil by getting a stupid red card. He went ahead to cost them this other game that they played at Emirates with Man City and they lost by two goals to one courtesy of his penalty in there. Why would you go ahead and really foul Bernardo Silva? Very silent in the game. You would have gone ahead to close him down because there are very many other players in there. People would say that no, you would have really gone ahead and really cut the ball into the lower bottom corner in there. But the same happened. Now the blood of Arsenal losing to Man City is on Grant Xhaka. You get however much Arsenal fans really came out and tried to really paint it away from that and really gave it a new face that the manager, sorry, the referee was the problem because they never gave they never gave them a penalty when Edson fouled 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 uh, this Norwegian captain Odegaard in there. But I really tell you that Arsenal had the best chances of the game and you failed to utilize them. And what happens to a team that that fails to utilize its best chances of the game, it loses the game because the other team like Man City, they will do what they will do. They will keep passing that ball even if they don't create many chances. But the little they will create, they will come up and show you that this, this is how big boys really, really, this is how big boys act in such games in there for you. So, Dissan Valhovic interest. Arsenal's interest in Dissan Valhovic has been confirmed by the manager in there. Though there are many, many other stories that Arsenal might be looking at Watkins in there for you. And I don't feel, feel like Watkins can leave a side which goes by the names of Aston Villa because the project Aston Villa is more convincing than what it's at a team which goes by the names of Arsenal. Aston Villa getting in Coutinho and it just gives him a new way because Coutinho wants to play into that central attacking midfield area in there. So I really feel like Watkins just knows that Ogen and Diaz playing playing behind Coutinho and me Watkins playing ahead of Coutinho that means more chances to score in and score goals because Coutinho is good at releasing is is good at releasing his 
players, especially the center forward in there for you. And then look at the intensity at which Aston Villa plays. I think Coutinho is really going to come up and enjoy this game of football after snubbing a game, after snubbing a team which goes by names of Arsenal. That's what I had for you here on to the Rokani Football Podcast. Ateta confirms Arsenal's Valhovic interest in there. That's the story in there for you. And you can leave your reactions into the comment section below. This is Rokani Football Podcast and this is what we do on a daily to bring you the latest news and information. You see, we are really trying to give you some bit of AFCON, some bit of of uh, of transfers in there and very many other and the very many other stuffs that you really guys are interested into this channel. We sign out for now. See you later.